What's up guys? Today I've got my hands on the Huawei Watch GT4. Now this new smartwatch is absolutely jam-packed with lots of great features and upgrades including a generous two-week battery life and in this video I will be sharing with you everything you need to know about this watch. So here it is on my wrist and I must say it's an absolute beauty. Now the price of this watch is only £229 which is quite impressive considering what you're getting. Huawei also have an offer right now so if you buy this from their official site you get the Freebuds SE2 completely free. Now let's talk about the design. Now the watch bezel is an octagonal design which you only usually see in luxury watches. So I'm already loving the bezel. And just under the bezel, you have these time markings going all the way around and then the actual screen. Also the bezels and the sides are made from stainless steel. You've got glass on top. I have no idea if it's sapphire as there is no mention on their website. But considering the price of this watch, I think we've got 3D curved glass, same as what we had in the watch GT3. So the watch is 46 millimeters in diameter with a thickness of 10.9 millimeters and it weighs 75 grams with the straps on. Now on the side we have a rotating crown button. It's also your home button and every time you rotate it you're going to feel some haptics. So feels really nice, great for navigation. Just under that we have a side button which can be customized to open any app you like. Um, by default it opens up your workouts and there are over a hundred workouts built in. Now also just underneath you're going to see your loud speaker grill and on the other side you can see a microphone hole. So yes, the smartwatch does have a built-in speaker and mic, and it does support Bluetooth cords, which we will be testing later in this video. And the bottom of the watch is made from plastic, and you've got this really nice smooth finish. So very comfortable on the wrist, and of course you can see all your health sensors. Now in the box you do get a magnetic USB wireless charger. Place the watch on top and plug that into any 5 watt USB source, so, and it takes around 55 minutes to fully charge this watch. And on my wrist, the watch feels really comfortable. It doesn't weigh me, it doesn't weigh my wrist down much. I have a wrist circumference of seven inches and I'm actually finding this watch very comfortable. So very nice big display, thin bezels, beautifully designed smartwatch, and I love how this feels on my wrist. So the straps are made from silicon and you have a metal buckle and it actually says Huawei on the buckle as well. And they do feature a quick release so you can swap these out with your own 22 millimeter strap. Now the actual screen is 1.43 inches AMOLED with a screen res of 466 by 466 and you have 326 pixels per inch. Furthermore, this watch does not have built-in Wi-Fi. It functions predominantly with Bluetooth 5.3 connection with your phone. So downloading watch faces or uploading the weather, etc. is all done through the Bluetooth connection. The watch does have built-in NFC, but unfortunately NFC payments are not usable outside of China, which is a shame, but quite normal and expected from Huawei watches. Furthermore, this watch does have built-in GPS and features a new improved GNSS navigation tracker, which basically improves the dual band five satellite GPS positioning. So do expect a very accurate GPS performance from this watch. Now this smartwatch is running the Harmony OS version 4.0, which is very user-friendly. The touchscreen is very responsive and you do have all sorts of customization options. Furthermore, you also get Bluetooth phone calls. So you can make and receive phone calls directly on the watch and we are gonna do a quick call test. So this is a quick call quality test. So you guys can hear for yourselves what it's like to take a phone call directly on the loudspeaker of the Huawei Watch GT4. Health tracking is super accurate and quite comprehensive. The new improved Huawei TrueScene 5.5 Plus tracks your heart rate, SpO2, sleep and stress with pinpoint accuracy. Other health features are automatic sleep detection, including daytime naps. You've got automatic workout detection and you have over a hundred built-in workouts to choose from. So how did I get on with this watch? Well, I was very pleased with the accuracy of the health tracking and I really liked the 24 seven monitoring of the various sensors. And what I really liked is every single health feature is enabled by default. So Huawei True Sleep, continuous heart rate monitoring, stress monitoring, SpO2 and continuous temperature monitoring, everything is on by default. And I was still able to achieve just over 12.5 days battery life. So this smartwatch offers an impressive battery life 
other watch manufacturers need to take notes on how to build a smartwatch with a superb battery life. Now, if we talk about compatibility with Android and iOS, I did test it with both. Android will give you full compatibility. There are no features missing. Everything works as it should. This also works with iOS. I've connected to my iPhone 14 Pro and all the features are working. You've got Bluetooth phone calls, read-only notifications, always on display and complete health tracking features. So everything works well with iPhone minus Huawei Music. So what you can't do on iOS is transfer your music collection to the internal storage. That feature is Android only. There is one song built in. You can you can play that song and the sound and the sound quality is actually really good of the speaker, but you can't transfer any more music to this if you connect via iOS. Now, when connected to an Android phone, this is the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. You can see a few more features are available when connected to an Android phone. So music, first of all, as I mentioned earlier, you can actually copy over music wirelessly, which I've already done. You just tap plus songs and any music that you've got stored on your phone can be transferred to the watch. You'll be able to download some third party apps directly to the watch. And here is what you can expect. So there's no big mainstream app included. You've got App Manager where you can download updates or add and remove apps. So it's a shame you're not getting any Spotify, YouTube Music or anything like that. You're getting some third party app support, but it's not mainstream. Another new feature is Wallet. So that's NFC, but it's not going to work in your country if you're not living in China. If they activate that, you can basically make NFC payments. So that's not working. We've got Quick Replies. So that's another feature not available on iOS. So you can preset quick replies. So if someone sends you a text message, you can reply with these presets or you can even add a custom reply and up to 36 custom replies can be added. So that is pretty much the difference between iOS and Android. So I've just sent myself a message. It says, hi, how are you? I can reply with emoji or I've got all of those preset replies that I showed you from that from the smartphone app. So you can't type anything, there's no keyboard, but you can use one of those presets to reply or you can even use emoji. So yes, you're getting a few more benefits and features when you when connected to an Android phone. Okay, now let's talk about the watch faces. This watch does support downloadable watch faces and there are plenty to choose from. This is the default watch face and it's called Phantom Yellow. You can see it's on the box. And I actually really like the look of this watch face. It looks good and you've got plenty of useful complications in there already. Now, if you want to change, keep the center press. You will feel some haptic feedback and you'll notice a cog under some of the watch faces. So that means you can customize some of the complications. Now, if you want to change, keep the center press and just swipe to change to another watch face. And there are plenty of watch faces to choose from. And I'll give you some examples of some of my favorite watch faces on this watch. Plenty of watch faces and they look really good on that AMOLED display. Um, really liking the default one, so that's the one I'm using mostly. Let me give you a quick walkthrough of the smartphone app. So it's the Huawei Health app. I'm using it on the iPhone 14 Pro. As soon as you open it, it will give you your health page at a glance. So you can actually tap on any of these metrics to give you more detailed stats and you can see it's categorized in day, week, month and year. So that's the same with all the metrics, including sleep. If you tap on exercise, you can actually start a plan, start a workout and there are many options there to choose from. Under devices, you will see your actual device connected with the battery information. You've got your watch faces, so you can change your watch face directly from here and you can download brand new ones. So you've got this type of watch face store from within the app and you can choose from new top and free. So if you go to top, you will see a whole bunch of paid watch faces that you can buy or you can go to the free section and there are so many free watch faces that you can download immediately. So I just want to download one right now just to show you how long it takes. So if we just download this one, it's called Orange Light Radar. So hit install. So it downloaded instantly, but now it's transferring. So let's see how long that takes. And this one is just 0 0.27 megabytes. So that's less than half a megabyte, guys. And you can see it's done. That's actually a nice watch face. I picked it at random, but that's actually all right. I love the seconds. So those were your watch faces paid and free. If you tap on your device, you will get all your settings as well. So health monitoring, notifications, find your device, 
alarms, weather reports, favorite contacts and help. So if you tap on health monitoring, you will see everything is enabled by default. Now this watch has a superb battery life, but you can make things better by turning off things that you're not gonna use. I personally leave it all on as it doesn't do any harm. I can get about 12 day battery life with everything on and you can tweak things if you wanted a slightly better battery life. Notifications are all enabled by default, but you can switch things on and off. Find your device. If you were to lose the watch, you hit ring. I'm here. Okay, so that's, and that gets louder and louder. So even if your watch is on silent, I have mine on vibrate silent. If you lose your watch, you can still find it. It will still play the sounds loud. So that was pretty much all your settings. You've got factory reset over here and you've got firmware updates. So let me give you a walkthrough of the watch features and software. Now, if you swipe to the left, you've got your health tiles. The first one is your health rings. So the aim is to close all three rings every day by being more active. If we swipe again, you've got your heart rate and you've got shortcuts to other apps, which is quite convenient. So you can check your heart rate and then you can immediately switch to the temperature sensor if you wanted. If you swipe again, we've got calendar and events. And again, you've got shortcuts here. You've got music and you've got phone as well. Swipe again. You've got your workouts. But it's interesting how they managed to fit some metrics on the side. You can see calories, you can see your steps. Um, that's just there as for convenience. If we go back on the previous page, you can see there is a weather at the bottom and events at the top. So they're making use of every single tile. So very interesting what Huawei are doing. You've got the moon lunar cycle information here, and that is pretty much all your tiles. Now, if you swipe to the right, you've got a few more shortcuts here for weather and music. And if you swipe up from the bottom, you've got your read only notifications. So you can't actually reply to any of these notifications. They are read only. And I think that is a iPhone feature. If you connect to Android, you actually will be able to reply. Now coming back to these health activity tiles, if you keep the center press, you can actually customize and add and remove stuff. So if you don't want the lunar moon, you can just press delete on it. It will remove it. And then you can add other stuff. So me personally, I need SPO2 and I need my sleep monitoring. You've got skin temperature, stress, call logs, contacts, music. You've got the list goes on. There's a lot that you can add here. You can even add a compass. If you swipe down from the top, you've got quick toggles, torch, sleep mode, and do not disturb. And you've got information there for your battery and connection info as well. I think I forgot to mention this watch is water resistant. It's 5 ATM water resistant. So you can swim and you can track your swimming strokes as well. And a few other things I want to show you. Now, if you go to settings and tap on watch face and home, you can actually activate your always on display from here and you can change your home screen layout. So I, I have it on list mode, but this was the default grid. I'll show you what grid looks like. So it's kind of like the Apple Watch style. I don't really like that. Um, you know, the scrolling just zooms in and out. I personally prefer to have the list view so that you can actually take advantage of the scroll and you can scroll up and down. Display and brightness, the watch is very bright. We're only halfway right now. You can turn that right up to max. So the watch has a very nice bright screen. Down button can be customized to any app. So it's set on workouts, but you can have it open anything you like. So I just want to quickly go through the built-in apps that you have in this watch. So we've got workouts, workout records, workout status, heart rate, SpO2, skin temperature monitoring, health clovers, activity records, sleep stress, breathing exercises, call logs, contacts, music, remote shutter, barometer, compass, notifications, weather, calendar, stopwatch, timer, alarm, torch, find phone, and settings. So I just wanna show you some of these in action. So let's go to the compass first of all. So that's your digital compass. Yep, that looks amazing. Let's go back, tap barometer. So that's what you can expect with barometer. You can see the reading there. If we go back, I wanna quickly show you what the stopwatch looks like. Okay. No harm looking at the timers. You can set quick timers or custom. The torch would just make the screen go super bright. So in the dark, that would be quite useful. So find a phone. If you lost your phone that's connected to this, tap and you hear it ringing in the background and it will get louder and louder. Okay, so now it's time to test out the heart rate sensors. This is the O2 ring. It's medical grade heart rate and SpO2 sensor. You wear it on your thumb. So let's compare the results with the watch. So let's start off with heart rate sensor. So the O2 ring is giving us 94 beats per minute and 92 on the watch versus 94, let it change again, 96, 95, it's 92, 93, 93 and 93, that's gone to 91 and it's 92 over there. So you can see that the Huawei watch is giving very similar results. 
Um, after about 30 seconds, they're nearly neck and neck. So very good, accurate heart rate sensor. I'm liking that. Now let's check out the SpO2, which is a lot harder to get accurate in smartwatches. So tap measure. I have to keep still with the watch with the watch facing upwards. All right, it's gone to 97. So 95% blood oxygen according to the O2 ring and 97% according to the Huawei Watch GT4. There you have it guys. That was the Huawei Watch GT4. And no doubt I am super impressed with the design and build quality of this smartwatch. It does look like an expensive luxury smartwatch, yet it's priced so reasonable. Battery life is impressive with all health features on. You have a beautiful AMOLED display with really nice looking customizable watch faces included. You have five ATM water resistance, superb health tracking. Huawei have really stepped up their health tracking and accuracy, which is a plus point for us consumers. Unfortunately, NFC payments are still not supported in the UK or out of China. And there are a few incompatibilities with iPhone. Apple really doesn't want you to use any other smartwatch with the iPhone apart from the Apple Watch. So I'm really glad that Huawei cracked the code and made it happen. Now I've been using this watch with my iPhone for a few days and I've had no issues. I'm not missing out on any of the features. It works great with the iPhone. Of course, with Android, you get everything. So win-win situation here, regardless of what system OS you're using. Now you might be on Android and considering moving to iOS or vice versa. At least this watch will work on either. So bottom line, this is overall a superb smartwatch. You can't go wrong at 229. Needless to say, super bang for your buck. Or as they say in India, paisa for sul. I hope you found this video useful. Any questions, you guys know what to do. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.